Experience you can trust. CBS News. Here at home, the debate is heating up. Good evening, I'm Aline Sergali. Here on Capitol Hill. I'm Aline Sergali in London. I'm Aline Sergali in Rome. We'll deliver his traditional Easter Sunday blessing. My name is Aline Sergani, and I am so proud to be Lebanese. I was born in Lebanon, and I came to the United States when I was just a baby, five months old, raised in Miami, and really every day of my life uh, was brought up in a family that never let me forget where we came from. Um, I was living in the United States, but Lebanon was always in our lives, in our hearts, in our family. I was adopted in an orphanage in Beirut. My mother and father, uh, both of uh, Lebanese-born parents, um, did not have children at the time. And my mother was uh, given really a death sentence when she was battling cancer. She was coming uh, to Lebanon to visit family with her mother and father. And she says to my father, what would you like from Lebanon? And he said, a baby. And she said, are you crazy? I'm not going to adopt a baby. And she was sick and leave you with a baby if God forbid something happens. And he says, nothing will happen. We, we will be blessed with a baby and you will be blessed with good health. In 2005, when I was working for CBS News, I was sent to cover the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And I thought, there is no way I am going to be so close to Lebanon and not go see my family, who I had never met, and not go see the country where I was born. But <laughs> I did not know that in Israel, where we landed, that I could not have my passport stamped. <laughs> and so I said, you know what? I will go back to Washington and get a new passport. But it took me more than 10 years to make that trip. Last year, for the first time when I went to Lebanon, I said to my mother, there's my father unfortunately has deceased. I said to my mother, there is no way I'm going to Lebanon for the first time without taking you with me. And so we went and uh, we went to this orphanage together and it was it was beyond emotional really because all my life I heard the story of when they adopted me and the first time that she saw me and what the orphanage looked like and what the process was like and and we were getting closer to the orphanage and I remember actually physically hearing my heartbeat and going closer to the street where the orphanage was, the creche, and going inside for the first time. And I'm saying to myself, I'm okay, this is not a big deal. It's just, you know, an orphanage that you happen to be in for the first five months of your life. Don't get emotional, don't be dramatic, it's not a big deal. And just trying to talk myself through it and seeing the first nun and hug, they're hugging me and kissing me and taking my hand and kissing my hand and taking my face in their hands and kissing my face. But I held it together until I saw a woman who was an orphan at this orphanage and she never got adopted. So she grew up in this orphanage. Her name was Blanche and she remembered me she was much, much older than I was, and I guess I was like her little friend, the baby, you know. And she was saying in, in Arabic to the sister, is it okay if I hug her? And that was it, then I lost it. Because she kept saying my name that was my name at birth, and not my adopted name, and hugging me and kissing me like I was her long lost baby sister. And so I was just so moved. And at that moment, there was no way to not be moved beyond, beyond everything.
So that was a really emotional visit. And I remember uh, that first visit. I fell in love with Lebanon for sure the first time, but it was so emotional that it was almost surreal. And that was in June. Well, I couldn't wait. <laughs> so six months later, I returned and we have family there. The second visit was when I felt I am home. The first time was so emotional, I couldn't really wrap my arms around it. The second time I felt, this is Lebanon and I'm at home. Not because it didn't feel real, but because it was everything I was told about in growing up. I have never had a place take my breath away, ever. And I thought, how many times can one person cry? <laughs> It, it, just not only from emotion, but from beauty, from sheer beauty of the cedars, of the sea, of the people. It, it brought a level of gratitude and of pride that I always had, but it was a renewal of that pride. It was a renewal of that gratitude. I fell in love with my country with my heritage and with my religion. I fell in love with being a Maronite. I fell in love with being uh, Lebanese. I fell in love with, with my culture and with my heritage all over again. My heritage has influenced me as far as my work the most with working for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and ALSAC. You know, of course, St. Jude was founded by Danny Thomas, who was Lebanese. And when um, I was with CBS News and thought that my biggest wish had already come true with news, I couldn't imagine having anything more fulfilling than living my dream of being a news correspondent. But that dream pales in comparison to this dream, and that's serving the St. Jude mission. Uh, it is such an honor to have this privilege of continuing to serve a mission that Danny Thomas, a Lebanese uh, icon, started with his friends. And to do such important work for the children who need it the most is a true honor. And I believe that St. Jude is the biggest and most important uh, gift to the world that was started by a Lebanese person. And so to be able to continue to have just a small role in serving this mission is to me the biggest privilege and the biggest honor I could ever imagine. our news for tonight. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 10. Good night.